G'day guys, Jason here from the Outer Farm. We're actually on the trial property this morning. So it's 3.30 in the morning and it's butchering day today. The mobile butcher will be here at five o'clock. So we've got a few chores we need to do before then. We've got to get the marquee set up. We've got the eskies out there, freezer bags. We've got to get the side room set up with the tables and the cryback machine because it's about anywhere between, I think five hours for two of them to cut this carcass up. It's been hanging now for seven days in the cold room. So five hours of cut up and there's a day and a half of crybacking. I'm gonna have some breakfast now and when he gets here, he'll be right to go. So we're set up now and as you can see, we're into it. There's no rest for the wicked. Looks very lean there, Gary. Yes, very lean. No coverage of fat there. Must be the bazardite. <laughs> Might be the grass bed as well. Yeah. You've done grass fed before with a bit more fat cover? Uh, not, or well, maybe a little bit more, not much. Because I know, I know the bazardites are generally lean in nature. A little bit worried about that with the sausages, but the sausages you done last time for us are great. They have plenty of moisture, so. Unless the girls are quiet today, time the camera comes on. Get a camera shy, you should hear them when the camera's off. Couple of bits, so I didn't think it was worth your time. Oh right, yes. Do we do off the boot, guys? Um, or what? Just um, oh, gravy or just um, shoeing steak? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we'll just do shoeing steak, please. Right. You guys want to cover it all? Um, have me a block of the corn, have me biscuits on the way in here. I'm fit and healthy. You see, we've got Deidre over here putting stuff in the tenderizer. Barbecue steaks off the, the barbecue. The dog. Yep. Yep. Especially this one. He come. He, he came and watched at the door while Nelly took the steaks off the barbecue. Oh yeah. A little bit of cube steak there. With the minute steaks, crummy steak, hamburgers. A little bit. Bone meat. Nice tea bones. Very tender. Yeah. Very tender. So we've got a pile of dog bones here. Dogs aren't going to go without. Carl's just packing away those T-bones there. Try and keep the dogs away from the table. They ate the bit of fat underneath one of the table legs that Deidre's using was rocking them. She turned around and the table was rocking. She looked down and the dogs were eating the bit of fat that she had underneath one of the legs. So we're pretty occupying with his bone for about 10 minutes. Who's butchy? He's taken off, probably buried his. No, oh, he's talking. Oh, 
I fill it steaks. What are we doing with the front quarters? Anything special? There's the front quarters. What are you gonna get out of them? Uh, you have your blade, wide bone, rib fillet, um, and brisket. Do you want um, do you want any um, uh, fresh brisket or anything like that? That's slow uh, cooking. Just the light, like slow cooking. Yeah, yeah, yes, please, yeah. Um, beef ribs, beef spare ribs or not? Yeah, yes, I thought we wouldn't find them. Yeah. It's got to be slow cooked though if you're going to be spare ribs. Really slow. Yeah, really. Good to see you keeping up with the action, Dale. Huh? Good to see you keeping up with the action. Well, someone's got to do the work around here, ain't they? Oh, cameraman. <laughs> and let me open that lid for you. Yeah, we've been having a bit of trouble with dingoes. We've got to lock them up every night. Oh, really? That's just another job. Oh, that's right. That's what you got the cameras for, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mm. So you have got a few around? Yeah, apparently the forestry behind us for them. Ah. Uh, we're talking about the log at the timber cut the other day, and you see you always see these dingoes out there. There's a flower I can show you later, do you? <laughs> Your friend takes them in and puts them on the back window yeah. and they're flowering. Oh. Oh, yeah, so yeah. So you actually get the yeah. benefit out of it. Like, yeah, hooks out for the kitchen window. Yeah. In the covered area. Yeah, they're already Did you hear that, though? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've got plenty of room in front of that tree for your flowers and your orchids. Yeah, yeah. Come out yeah. and have a cup of coffee and look over the river while you're watching them. Yeah. So that's the final quarter out now. I might have to revise my time. I said five hours, but, but they brought their A game today and they're really smashing it out. Gary's that slow Deidre standing there and waiting for something to do. <laughs> Enjoying life. Dreaming about where they're going first. That's it. <laughs> Gary's semi retired. He's a lot faster than this. Once. Yeah, yeah. Then we had like three days at home by ourselves. It was oh, awesome. Nice. We nice. worked, we swam, we drank, and ate. Yeah, that's good. The old um, got an old spa bar. Old yeah. For a pool down the bar, and we filled it out with bubble bar. Oh, that was pretty cool. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> nice. The bubbles were blowing up the paddock. <laughs> Christmas in Australia, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was awesome. Oh, that's nice. So is that down near the near the dam? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Like you got it. Yeah. Well, it flooded there on um. Monday afternoon or Tuesday afternoon. Oh, yeah. We had to pack everything up. Oh. The water come up around the bottom of the bar. Well, I've flooded the dam. And just like, yeah. Oh yeah, they yeah, broke the, the creek bank. Because the neighbours up the road they had yeah, 90 mil in about an hour. And all that water came down and washed. Oh 
Oh, yes. Uh, filled the creek and everything. I noticed we're going out to see you yes. pub that all those lakes, creeks are out there along yeah. the roads. Well, there's yeah. one road going on the back of Gundy, which is almost over the road there. Yeah. Near the Gundy pub almost went under. Yeah, well, that's the yeah, water yeah, from our place. Yeah, it's going under, under the other Ah. Oh. Yeah, yep. What do you got there, Dale? Prime rib fillet. Yes, my darling. Did you read the bags? No, I can just tell by the cup. <laughs> <laughs> oh come, yeah, okay. Come, it comes with experience. <laughs> Sometimes I've got to remind Gary what cut he's working on. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know, it'll come with experience, doesn't it, mate? Yeah. We don't know. We just make it up. Yeah. Make it, it up till you make it. It's so one of the table, Gary. You've got two containers. One's obviously sausages, and one's obviously for mince. Yes, the mince is leaner, and the once the sausages have a little bit more fat in. Method behind the madness. Got a couple of chunks that don't really be cut up. It's going to be wire bone. My bones? Certainly is. I can tell and they're not even written on the bag. <laughs> You're learning, sweetheart. Dogs are going to be well fed. Short ribs. Tail in here, we're just cutting up the offal. Beef cheeks, you eat the beef cheeks? Yes, yes, please. You over here putting it through the mincer. I reckon there'd be five star mince there, Deidre. Hard foundation. Not much fat. No. and have a close look at this mint. No, 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 no. Never... There's not much fat in there at all. Like I said, it's 100% grass fed. There's no grain in this. We haven't cut any visual fat off that carcass at all. There wasn't much on it. So there's no visual fat and hence this is straight off the knife. And then we just got straight bones left over. There's no layers of fat like we normally get when we used to grain feed. Cut that fat off, we use a bit for sausages, and the rest will be thrown out. When we first started grass feeding, we are worried about the fat content that we're going to get in the mince and the sausages, where they're going to be dry. But we had one, one of our heifers broke its leg in a hole, and, we'll, and that's when we realised that that was straight grass fed. We didn't grain fed her, grain fed her. we ended up cutting her and put her in the freezer. And the sausages were really tasty. We didn't miss that fat and they had heaps of moisture in the mince and the sausages. And then we realised you don't really need a lot of fat content to have moist sausages or mince. Final bit of the puzzle now, we're down to the sausages. Oh, okay, yes. Yes. In the freezer? Yes. 
I think it takes up a little bit more room. Yeah, I guess it does. Um, And this is an art in itself. Mm -hmm. Iron sausages. Quite a talent tying those sausages, mate. Yeah. Any any good at knitting? Yeah, I'm not far away from it. When I get old, I'll be right. <laughs> Moving to a nursing home. <laughs> yeah, the rains are coming. It's all white out across the other side of the river. Last bit of the sausage, mint. So what's the additive there, Deidre? That's just a meal? Yep, tight and tasty beef meal. Here we have it. Boy. Yes, mum in the garden. Yes. God. Garden bone for the plants. <laughs> corn meat. Corn tongue. Corn tongue, corn everything. She loves corn tongue. And dusted, everything's packed away. Put the marquee down. Now we've just got a day and a half of cry back in front of us. <laughs> you did that last time. You had a finger. You never learned. See you mate. Thank you. We appreciate you guys hanging around to the end. We're going to do a cry backing video soon, so stay tuned for that one. So have a good morning, have a terrific afternoon, and a top evening, guys, wherever you're watching us from, and we'll catch you later.